All right, friends, welcome to May, brand new month, fresh intention. Tomorrow is a Monday and we get to begin again. We get to realign, we get to do what will serve you. But I have a challenge for you, uh, especially if you are just getting back into the groove of this or you're brand new, you're just getting started and maybe you're feeling overwhelmed or maybe you're feeling frustrated or maybe it's not happening the way you thought it was gonna be or you have all this like pressure on yourself. If that's the case, I am challenging you to have no weight loss goals this month, okay? I am a big believer that if you come to this journey and it's all about a number and it's all about a size, it will rob you of your joy and you'll get so you'll get almost obsessive and compulsive around your journey, which defeats the entire purpose of this, right? Because this is about you designing a journey that you can live on forever. It's not a diet, it's not a quick fix, it's not a done in 30 days sort of thing. This is your life that you're living. And I want you to figure out hacks around how to make healthy habits your norm, okay? So if you have been focused on a number or a size or a weight loss goal, and you're not feeling good or you're not and or you're not seeing results, I want you to put those goals in a box outside the door of the month of May, okay? It'll probably happen naturally if you surrender it because you're gonna be focused instead on cultivating one or two other habits that are gonna become non-negotiables. And so instead of focusing on weight loss, Maybe you focus on water. Like if you're not getting enough water, maybe that will be your focus for the entire month of May. I'm gonna get enough water no matter what. I'm going to, I'm gonna drink whatever your, your water goal is, which I always say take your current weight, not your goal weight, not the weight on your driver's license, but your current weight and divide that in half and that number in ounces is your bare minimum, okay? If you're breastfeeding, if you live somewhere super hot and sweaty, you're probably gonna wanna consume more water, but a water goal, having a water goal that's not just a goal, but it's something that you check that box every single day, it will serve you in so many areas of your life. It's gonna help you with hunger, it's gonna help you with your skin, it's gonna help you with your energy, it's gonna help you with your sleep, it's gonna help you with your bowel movements, it's going to help you with your energy with so many different areas of your life, okay? And water is something that all of you can do, whether you're doing beach body on demand or you're doing something at a gym or you're doing absolutely nothing, water is a perfect place to begin. And I'm not even gonna ask you to give up soda or coffee. Instead, I want you to have a water goal like front and center and you make a deal with yourself that I can have that soda. I'm not encouraging you to drink soda, okay? I'm just saying it. If you have this all or nothing mentality, it's not going to serve you. <laughs> it's not going to serve you. And I want you to start making really healthy choices that become habits that you don't have to think about. And then we can stack them. And then once that water piece is solid, then you can layer something else in. If your water is already solid, but you're struggling with your workouts, well then that's your focus. This is not one size fits all, but I want you to stop making this an all or nothing, smaller little, win or lose kind of journey. That's not what we're on. And it's super discouraging if that's the way you're looking at it. And some of you are looking at it like that, okay? So I'm challenging you that if you are, if you do have a soda or a tea habit or a coffee habit, make yourself a deal that you can have that drink after you drink, I don't know, 12, 16 ounces of water. You just chug it down, right? Make a little song and just do it, okay? So if you're focusing too much on the weight loss, if you're focusing too much on you have to finish a program, it needs to look a certain way, that is a really fast way to burn out, to lose your joy, and to feel like you're just never gonna get there, okay? You are gonna get there. You're exactly where you need to be. If you need to realign, congratulations. I'm realigning today. I'm gonna upload some content and then I'm gonna step away from this space for a hot minute because that's what I need to do. I love gut protocol, so I'm gonna keep doing gut protocol. Tomorrow I'm starting my second round with the nutrition piece and I'm actually gonna do what I tell you not to do, which is I'm going to go back to day one of four weeks for everybody. It is just driving me crazy being out of sync with gut protocol and four weeks for everybody and I need to do it together because that's just who I am. I always tell you that if you've missed a day or whatever, you just pick back up where you leave off and I truly and fully believe that and in many other times and seasons I've done that, but I know right now what I need, what I need is to go back to a day one. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I've also picked a new book that I've been sharing about today, Pivot to Purpose. It's about breaking up with hustle culture, which is a very addictive drug. Um, 
And I'm still trying to figure out what the rest of my game plan is going to look like, but I know I need to prioritize joy and um, stop dragging people along. <laughs> so those are kind of my focuses for the month of May. I am here for you. you. Most of you, if not all of you, have my cell phone number. You are welcome to text me. I just feel really sad that I'm, I feel like I'm dragging people. I feel sad that I'm talking to myself. And I made a post and a lot of you have commented and I really appreciate it if you are peeping Tom. There's never any pressure for you to be like, you know, living on your phone and, and posting like proof of life every single day. But I also really want you to, to have a transformation, not just a weight loss, but I want you to fall in love with the journey and I want you to get momentum. And when you're constantly breathing life into people, and nothing seems to happen, that's really discouraging. And it's easy to think it's me. And I have to remind myself, it's not me. If you're a coach, I want you to know it's not always you. Everyone owns their own journey. We're all responsible for our own transformation. And if you keep coming up with the same excuses, it's too hard, I'm a loser, I can't do it, well, that's on you. You need to change your mindset. Just like I know I can identify today in this moment, I need to change my mindset. And so that means I have to prioritize the things that bring me joy and I have to go back to my own personal journey. You guys, when you are engaged with your own personal journey, it's an entirely different process. And so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm feeling excited about it. I know it's the right thing to do. If you of you in here are really struggling with that start stop journey with you feel like you're failing yourself you feel like maybe you just can't get momentum so i'm going to challenge you to have a different perspective around it i'm going to challenge you if you can't show up for yourself i want you to choose someone that you're going to show up for i did this in the very beginning when i was showing up to my fitness journey because i hated my body i hated it i hated it i was here to lose weight i was here to punish myself like literally everything was this negative perspective when I first started my journey. And I had to, I showed up for my kids. I showed up for my kids because I couldn't do it for myself. I didn't love myself enough to do it. And I was already coming at my journey from a place of, I suck, this is gross. I've let myself gain all this weight and I need to get my shit together and I have to punish myself for eating things. And that was a really unhealthy way of looking at it. But I also was like, I have to do this, not for me, but for my kids. Like my kids are gonna do what I do. And if I'm unhappy as an adult, if I'm unhappy in my skin, if my ha my habits aren't healthy and serving me, I am the roadmap for my children. And so that changed, that forced me to change how I showed up. That's why I started to listen to podcasts on my daily walks. That's why I started to shift little things and it wasn't huge changes. You, it's so easy to watch other people that are further along in their journeys and you think they have it all together or it was just this really easy thing and it's not. It's you making a decision and then you taking the daily action, not to be perfect, but to touch it every single day. And so I made a deal with myself that I didn't like who I was and I didn't want to continue to be her because I didn't want my kids to become her, okay? So what do you need to shift? If you can't show up for yourself, show up for your kids. Show up for a partner. Show up for someone in this group. Show up for me, your coach who believes in you and has been trying to breathe life into you for a week, two months, three freaking years, seven years. Some of you have been here from the very beginning and I will never quit on you. That's not what this is. This isn't me, get your shit together, I'm sick of you. This is me understanding that I have to pull back a little and put on my own oxygen mask and I'm telling you how I did it so you can do the same thing because it's not always easy and it's not gonna be something where you figure it all out and then you just continue on the same journey because it's all, we're all living, breathing humans. We all have, we're on this constantly evolving path. And if you're not on an evolving path, well then you're really not being authentic to your journey because we're all growing and we're all in different seasons and different experiences are gonna happen. And so you can either allow them to happen to you and be a victim, which is my biggest pet peeve by the way, or you can say, you know what, this is happening for me or this is happening to me and how, what can I learn from it? How can I grow through it? It's a gift, right? So if you can't show up for yourself, but you really, really do want to change, you're not just offering lip service, then that's what you do. You pick a person that you're gonna show up for and you're gonna touch it every single day. 
you're going to choose what you're going to commit to in the month of May. Maybe it's your water. Like I said, maybe you are going to do gut protocol. Maybe for you, you just need to have daily movement. Maybe it's the daily mindset. It's not all the things. I don't want you to do all the things because if you are at a day one place, that is the fastest way for you to lose your joy and become totally overwhelmed. You know what you need and you know where to find me. And I need you to dig deep and just to take the little bit of action every single day. Make it a non-negotiable that you're going to touch it. I talked about this yesterday where with my mindset work, like even on the days where I don't want to, I don't feel like it. There's so many things I don't feel like doing every day. It's not easy for me. Some things are easier because I've made them a non-negotiable habit. And I've taken the daily action where now I feel weird if I don't do it, right? But it's just that I promise myself I'm going to do this one or two things. Okay. That's what I'm asking you to do. I promise myself I'm going to do these one or two things in the month of May and I'm going to actually give it a fair chance and I'm not going to quit on myself and I'm not going to hold myself to unrealistic expectations. Okay. So if it's water and movement, then how much water do you need to drink and how are you going to get the water in? I shared my trick where I feel that big ball jar Every single night before bed or first thing in the morning, I actually still need to fill it. Um, so I'm going to have bonus water today. And then as I go through my day, I top off my water bottles. Or if I'm traveling, I make sure I have enough water bottles so that I know I'm getting that much water in. It's not hard. It's just a decision. And so for me, the water is something where I, for a long time, I had water goals and then I wouldn't drink all the water. And then I felt like crap the next day. And I finally connected the dots that, it was just, I was just dehydrated. I wasn't tired. I wasn't hungry. I wasn't constipated. I just was dehydrated. Hashtag duh. What an easy, free freaking fix, right? So what's, what is your non-negotiable? Pick a cup, pick one or two things. Okay. And if it feels impossible to do two things, then you start with the water. You don't even have to replace anything. You're just adding in the water and you, you connect the activity. So if you want to cut back on soda, but you can't give up soda, you can, you just don't want to, and that's okay. I'll meet you where you're at. You're going to drink 12, 16 ounces of water, chug it before you have the soda and see if that craving is still there. If you are struggling with limiting self-belief and shitty self-talk, then your, your focus needs to be personal development. Maybe it's a podcast. Maybe it's an audio book. I don't know. I've been really struggling sitting down and reading and I haven't been as consistent with my personal development, which is why we're having this conversation, which is why I made those posts, which is why I am in a season of burnout because I wasn't taking my own advice and I wasn't putting on the oxygen mask, even if it was five minutes a day, which seems like it would be nothing, right? It's like, that's too little to make an impact, but it does make an impact. Every action you choose to take and every action you choose not to take, every thought that you cultivate, I can do this, I am worth this effort, I'm proud of myself for showing up today. Every thought you think, it adds up, you guys. All of this is the compound effect. It's not all or nothing, it's not hit or miss, it's just you making a decision, what you need to do, what will serve you, not what Sarah thinks you should do, not what so-and-so is doing on social media, but what do I need? What do I need this May? Do I need to focus on my nutrition? Do I need to focus on my self-belief? Do I need to focus on just like moving my body for five minutes every single day? Even if that means you push play on your workout and you march in place, that's you showing up. That is you choosing your journey. That is you proving to yourself that you're capable of taking the action and getting the results. And when you do that long enough, when it compounds, it becomes easier. And before you know it, you're an entirely different version of you. I'm an entirely different version of me than I was when I began. You would not even recognize me. <laughs> and I share my reel with you because I don't want you to think that like it's always sunshine and lollipops. It's not. It's not, right? I think that's the hardest part about coaching. It's not the inviting. It's not the hitting the goals. It's not even like building a team. The hardest part is seeing what people are, people are capable of and watching them be unwilling to do the thing, to take the action. Change is always gonna be uncomfortable, but you can be uncomfortable and sore because you're showing up to your journey, or you can be uncomfortable because you're suck. And then you get into this mindset thing where you're like, I'm, I'm a loser, I can't do it, I keep quitting on myself. You're the driver of your bus, you're the author of your story. So if you don't like where you're at, then change something. I don't like where I'm at. I am in this total season of limbo and I freaking hate it. <laughs> 
I don't know where we're gonna live next in six months. I don't know what the goal is. And I am a planner and it's eating at my soul. So I'm gonna stop thinking about that and I'm gonna be in the moment and I'm gonna control my controllables. I'm gonna start day one of gut protocol tomorrow. I'm gonna pair it with day one of four weeks for everybody, even though I'm almost three weeks in, I'm gonna go back to day one because that's what I need. And your journey doesn't need to mirror mine. You don't need to do what I'm doing. You're always welcome to follow along. You're always welcome to link arms with me, but this is your journey and we're in different seasons and we have different needs and it's okay for your journey to look differently. It's okay for it to take as long as it needs to take, but it is not okay for you to continue to quit on yourself. It is not okay. It's not even okay for you to ghost me all the time. I'm tired of that shit. Don't tell me you need help and then not reply to any of my messages. <laughs> oh, so anyway, I'm done talking to you. I hope that some part of that resonates with you. If you have these really big goals, I want you to have big goals. But if you are feeling stuck and you're feeling like it's too big and you're never actually getting any momentum, it's okay to leave those big goals over here percolating and to make little tinier ones that you can win, all right, that you can get momentum with. Because it's the same with a to-do list, right? Like sometimes I write down you know, brush teeth, take a shower, pay the bills, fold the laundry, things that I'm going to do, but it feels so much better when I can cross it off. And I want you to have those wins. I want you to get the momentum. It doesn't have to be big or Herculean. It just needs to be yours. So take some action, set some goals for you that you're for yourself this month. Okay. All right. I'm going to get off here and I'm going to, um, I'm going to upload all the main content and um, I'm gonna schedule a few posts and we're gonna let it roll and we'll see how you show up. We'll see how I show up. I'm not quitting anything. That's not what any of my posts have been about today. It's just about, it's okay to struggle and it's okay to be authentic and it's okay to say, I need this. And I think I've always had this group as kind of like, just come as you are, but I need you if you're on the journey to show up for me because you're my accountability partner. I'm not this like have it all together coach. That's the beauty of beach body coaching is we don't have to have all our ducks in a row. We're not some perfect person. That's not who I am. I'm just a normal human like you that wants to be better and do better and be more joyful in my journey. That's what I want. And so I want you to be my accountability partner. I want you to show up alongside me and we can all encourage each other and sing kumbaya. That doesn't mean I'm asking you to live on your phone. It doesn't mean I want you to be a carbon copy of me. It just means I want you to be engaged with your journey, whatever that freaking means for you. Okay? Okay. Good talk. So, May, you don't need to have a weight loss goal. You don't even have to have a finish a program goal. You just have to have a couple goals that resonate with you. They're going to move you closer to that next level version of yourself because it's those teeny tiny baby habits that we start to make non-negotiables and then they become your reality and then they're, they're your habits and then you can start to compound that and you can start to get even more wins and you can start to feel even more proud of where you're at in your journey. 